Hello, my name is Grant from BeatTheMarketAnalyzer.com and I'll save you all the BS and marketing hype and just get to the point. Today I'm going to tell you about how to beat the stock market, but not just how to beat the stock market, how to beat it consistently. I'll then tell you five ways to make more money with less risk, and finally I'll tell you the first step that you should take today to start beating the market. Now this system is based on Warren Buffett and Benjamin Graham's value investing technique. Value investing is a stock investing technique that is based on factual data and it works. How well does it work? Well during 43 years of investing from 1965 to 2007 the S&P 500 has returned 6,840 percent. During the same period Warren Buffett's value investing technique has returned 400,863%. That's over 57 times greater than the market return. And it's not just Buffett and Graham that use this technique. There are other value investors such as David Dodd, Charlie Munger, Martin Whitman, John Templeton, Joel Greenblatt, Christopher Brown, Mason Hawkins, Irvin Kahn, Whitney Tilson, and the list goes on and on. But I won't bore you with their details. You can look up their track records which speak for themselves. Now I'm going to tell you the secret to beating the market consistently. What you want to do is invest in good companies at bargain prices. Simple, right? It's a simple and common sense approach and it's the same in real life. If you're going to buy a product at a store, you want to buy a good quality product at a bargain price. It just makes common sense. Now, it's the same thing with stock investing, but people complicate it. Now, why do they complicate it? Well, for various reasons, but the media complicates it because the common sense and logical approach to stock investing is not sexy, it's not exciting, and it doesn't sell magazines and get airtime. Uh, what they're interested in is the latest or greatest investment, hot picks, IPOs, penny stocks, things like this that cause excitement and the ups and downs and fluctuations of the market. Stock brokers, they complicate it and try to confuse you so that you'll be scared to invest on your own and so that you'll use their overpriced services. And then people in general, the general public, they just feel that if it's too simple, too logical, then it just can't work. There must be some kind of mysterious secret to investing. Okay, so those are the reasons why people complicate stock investing, but it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be confusing. Now I'm going to tell you about the five ways to make more money with less risk. Number one, you want to stop believing the BS. Now, there are many people out there that do chart reading, stock forecast, and predictions, and they believe they can read the mountains and valleys of the stock and what's going to happen tomorrow. And pardon me, but this is all bullshit. Nobody knows what's going to happen from day to day, and your guess is as good as mine. So instead of believing this speculative guessing, trust the facts and base your investments off proven data. Number two, don't short-term speculate. Now the short term movement of the market is mostly based on speculation and two emotions are greed and fear. People get greedy and they get excited and they buy and then they get scared and worried and then they sell. So the market goes up and down and has these fluctuations from day to day and even hour to hour or minute to minute. So instead of focusing on the short term, what you want to do is focus on long term five to ten years of an individual stock's historical performance and that'll give you a real feel for the stock's movement. Number three, you want to prevent information overload. If you go to Yahoo Finance or Google or MSN Money or CNN Money, there's so much information, financial reports and statements and all of this criteria for investing stocks and marketing hype do not overload yourself with these fads and trends of money magazines and investing media. They're just going to confuse you and sidetrack you. What you want to do, as I said, 
focus on individual good companies and a few criteria that prove these companies to be good quality and find them at bargain prices. Okay, the next thing is number four, avoid penny stocks, IPOs, and mutual funds. Now, with penny stocks, 95% of penny stocks fail. They're very risky and they're not proven investments. So you want to stay away from them. IPOs, Warren Buffett has said that IPOs are almost always a bad investment. IPOs have no proven track record. They don't have the 5 to 10 years historical data. So you can't really tell how they're going to do. So mostly investing in IPOs, it's speculative and it's guessing and very risky. Mutual funds. Now, mutual funds are very popular, and our media has made them the thing that you should invest in, and also stockbrokers promote them. Now, why did they promote them? They promote them because it's an easy package. It's an easy vehicle to invest your money, and they put your money in this, and then they don't really have to worry about tending to your account, and they just collect your maintenance fees. Also, they're so watered down, so diversified, that they never really make a lot of money, and in most cases, they don't really lose a lot of money either. They're just kind of so-so, and uh, you'll never really see much gain out of them. The other problem with mutual funds is their fees. Their fees are very expensive when you're using traditional brokers, and even if you do make a return, usually it's reduced by the fees, or sometimes you just break even when you add in all your fees. Here's an interesting fact about mutual funds. Out of more than 7,000 mutual funds, eight have beat the S&P 500 every year for the past decade. Seriously, eight. And that's one of the most important statistics that you'll want to concentrate on when thinking about investing in mutual funds. They're just not a very good investment to make a lot of profit. Okay, number five, stop giving your money away to money managers. Here's an interesting fact. Over 70% of fund managers fail to beat the market consistently. There was even a coin flipping experiment where they took 300 college students' ability to guess heads or tails on a coin versus 300 money managers to guess good investments. Turns out the money managers had no better chance of picking good investments than the college students had at guessing heads or tails. Therefore, we can assume that money managers have no better chance of picking stocks than we do. Also, money managers typically charge very high fees. My money manager, for example, charged me $30 to $40 per trade. And that's typical, usually $30, $40, sometimes $50 or more per trade. Whereas, if I use my online trading account, I only pay $10 or less per trade. Also, most importantly, money managers don't care about your money as much as you do. And that's the realization you have to come to. Therefore, I think that we can all agree that based on this information, we're actually better off taking control of our own money and investing in safe, quality companies at bargain prices. Now, what can we do today to take control of our money and start beating the market? Well, the next step is to set up an online trading account. And you can set up your online trading account with many different trading account companies. I personally use Scott Trade, but there's Trade King, E-Trade, various other ones. They're pretty similar. It doesn't really matter. Scott Trade, for example, is especially easy to set up an online trading account. You can set up the account all online for free and actually start trading within the same day. Scott Trade also offers some promotional codes for free trades. If there are any current promotional codes, then I'll post them in this video. You can use these promotional codes for uh, free trades, discounts, or something like that. If you already have a friend who uses Scott Trade, then you can use their promotional code. If you already have a traditional brokerage account or a money manager, then it's also very easy to sign up an online account and then just transfer everything over from your money manager to your newly set up online trading account. After you set up your online trading account, the next step is to find good companies to invest in. Now this technique is based off of Warren Buffett and Benjamin Graham's value investing technique. So first I'll talk about how to find good companies. 
and next I'll talk about how to find bargain prices. First, how to find good companies. Let's look at what Buffett did to find good companies. He looked at earnings performance, share price growth, debt levels, profit margins, owner earnings growth, and handling of shareholders money. Now if you're confused by these terms, don't worry, it's understandable. Even experienced stock investors get confused because there's a lot of data out there and sometimes too much data and people get overwhelmed. The good news is that you don't need all of this data and there's a few essential criteria that we're going to focus on so you don't have to worry about the rest which will sidetrack and confuse you. So most importantly we want to look at return on equity which is ROE and also dividends yield. Now return on equity is very important and it was one of Buffett's favorite measurements because it took into account a lot of things in one measurement such as income, assets, debt, profit margins, and other things and it gives you a overall view of the company's performance. Another thing we're going to look at is dividends yield. Now dividends yield is important because it tells you directly how much money the company is going to pay you. Now this criterion directly affects how much money you make. Now other people focus on different criterion and sometimes this criterion doesn't really affect you directly. Such things as unemployment levels, politics, currency rates, things like that. It has very little direct effect on the bottom line which is how much money you're going to make from your investment. So instead of focusing on this stuff, just focus on the most important essential criterion that will give you the best overall picture of the company's performance. Along with return on equity and dividends yield, Buffett would also look at other criteria such as 5 to 10 year price growth, 5 to 10 year earnings growth or EPS growth. Uh, he would also look at ROIC or return on invested capital, gross profit margin, PEG ratio or price earnings growth ratio, and the ability of a stock to recover during an economic downturn. So just looking at these few criteria instead of all of the information, we're drastically reducing the overload of information in evaluating stocks. Now this is great for us because it saves us a lot of time in finding good companies. The problem is that even with a small number of criteria, the manual process of evaluating stocks is often tedious and takes a long time. I know from personal experience, it would usually take me 30 minutes or more to analyze one stock manually. Now the reason why it took me so long is because I would set up an Excel spreadsheet and I would go to different websites such as Reuters, Yahoo Finance, MSN Money and so on and I would find the data that I needed. The reason why I had to go to different sites is because not all the information is on one site so you have to jump around. The other thing is that sites will often charge you a fee to get this data. Uh, they don't provide all of the data for free and especially when you're trying to get five to ten year historic data they'll often charge you for this information so let's say that we did get the data that we needed and we punch it into our excel sheet now we still have to compare company a to company b and see which is the better company after we do that we compare company a to c and so on now doing this can be very educational because you can see the strengths and weaknesses of each company but you can see that it'd be very tedious and time consuming. Plus, you're limiting yourself to the amount of time that you have. You couldn't analyze 500 stocks in one afternoon or even in one week. So you're really limiting the number of good companies that you can find. But let's say that you do find a handful of good companies. You still have to find out if these good companies are at a bargain price. So now I'm going to talk about the second part, how to find out if a good company is at a bargain price. So how do we determine if a good company is at a bargain price? Well, we're going to use Benjamin Graham's intrinsic value formula. Intrinsic value is an estimated value of a company based on earnings and other factual data. Once we find the intrinsic value, we can find out if the company is at a bargain price. For example, let's say that company A has an intrinsic value of $100 and the market price that it's selling at is $60 per share. Then we can see that its value is more than its selling price and therefore we can say it's at a bargain price. But before we buy, we'd still want to make sure that we're safe and eliminate our risk even more. So what we do is we'll 
add a margin of safety. So even if we screw up and overvalue the company, we can still reduce our risk by adding this margin of safety. Now how does the margin of safety work? Well, let's take the intrinsic value, which was $100, and we'll reduce it by, let's say, 50%. 50% would be our margin of safety. Now, with this stock at $100 and a margin of safety at 50%, the maximum price we'd be willing to pay is, of course, $50. But the current price is $60. So when considering the margin of safety, this same stock is no longer at a bargain price. So this is how we would determine bargain price. Now let's put it all together. You'll take each of your good companies and find out if they're at a bargain price. And just so you know, it won't be easy to find the combination of a good company at a bargain price. Out of 100 stocks, you might find one good company at a bargain price. But when you do, it'll be worth it. Finding a good company means safe and consistent returns with good growth potential. Finding it at a bargain price means lowered risk with higher returns. This is the concept of value investing, and it's definitely worth it. Keep in mind that you can do this manually, like I used to do, or you can use a faster and more accurate method, which I use today. Let's go to a stock spreadsheet that does all of the tedious work for us. I created this spreadsheet for my own investing purposes, and now I'm sharing it with you. At the end of this video, I'll show you how you can download it also. Okay, this is the spreadsheet that I was telling you about. You can see here we're at the single analyzer sheet, and there's a multi-analyzer saved data, my investment plan, and other sheets here. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to enter some stock symbols. Also, if you need some stock symbol names, they're also in here provided. But I know a few offhand. So let's say Chevron, CVX. And we put a start date or buy date. So let's put January 22nd, 2013. And let's put our sell date as one year later, January 22nd, 2014. And let's enter another one. Let's enter Nike, NKE. And let's put uh, January let's say 17th, 2009. And let's make this a past stock. So let's put June 30th, 2010. Let's do one more. Microsoft. And here let's put March 21st, 2011. And March 21st, 2012. Okay, now all we do is hit the calculate button. Okay, and you can see that it filled in the information here. CVX is Chevron, and there's Nike, and there's Microsoft. And then over here it has the market price. So at this start date, these are the market prices. And then these are the prices that the analyzer recommends us to buy the stock. So 115 is a good price to buy at. Uh, we should have bought at 31 is the highest price to buy at. And this one's at 46. So we can see Nike is not at a bargain price and Microsoft is at a good price there uh, should we have bought this stock uh, possibly should have bought Chevron no and no for Microsoft and Nike okay so why so it gives us a reason here well Chevron is a good company at a bargain price Nike and Microsoft during this time period they lack the ability to maintain price and or recover during an economic downturn so those bottom two were considered risky investments at this time. Chevron was considered a good company. And here, this gives you a really easy company rating. So out of 100 points, Chevron was rated 86. You can see anything over 70 points is considered a good investment. So I really like this feature because it's really easy to see and it's simple. Um, it's not like reading uh, financial statements and things like that or some other analyzers. They provide a lot of information. And uh, this just makes it really simple. gives you one number to tell you if it's a good company. And then you'll be able to compare it to other companies you put in here. Okay. So if we go further over, we can see more information. And what is that good company rating based on? 
So here's our company rating. We have 10 year upward price per share. We have earnings per share, ability to recover from an economic downturn or market crash. Um, there's return on equity. That was the very important measurement we talked about before. Return on invested capital. Gross profit margin. There's our PEG ratio. And there's our total score again. So Chevron scored 16 out of 16 for return on equity. Okay. Return on invested capital scored 12 out of 12. So all of these were good companies in those categories. Over here, PEG ratio, Chevron's 2.12, where Nike and Microsoft are lower. Okay. So very easy to compare. Okay. So that's good company. All right. Going further over, we look at stock value, 52 week low and high. Here's EPS, earnings per share, and it gives you 10 years of EPS right in a row. Um, you can see if things are going up and if they're going up consistently. And this is just more details, but all of your basic information is provided in if it's a good company, that, that one score. Okay, as we go to the right more, here's our intrinsic value based on Benjamin Graham's formula. 52-week midpoint, estimated value of the stock. This is the difference that the 52-week low price is below the start date price. So sometimes you can buy a stock very close to its 52-week low, and you can really get it for a bargain. So this is saying that Chevron is 17% away from its 52-week low. Okay, over to the right more. Here's our margin of safety price. So margin of safety price for Chevron is 157. So this is saying that we could spend up to $157 on Chevron, and Chevron was currently at 115. So we can see that Chevron's at a real bargain right now as of this start date. Okay, so we were at margin of safety. Okay, here we have more information. If it's at a discounted price, yeah, it's at discounted price of 26% from the margin of safety price. It's a bargain buy, yes. And then here is what our return is. And this is the return of the S&P 500 to compare it to during the same time period. Okay. So that is the single analyzer. What you want to do is if you have this information in here, then you can save all these rows of data or each individual row and it will put, a, put it into this save data sheet. Okay, so here we are in the save data sheet. This is just the place where we store all of our saved data and if any of these stocks are yellow all the way across, it means that it's a possible buy. If any of them are green all the way across, it would mean that it's a recommended buy. So what you can do is you can analyze stocks in the single analyzer and then just save them over to the save data sheet. And you can build up a good list of good companies at bargain prices. It's very easy. And if you think this is cool, then you should check out my favorite function. It's the multi-analyzer where you can analyze up to hundreds or thousands of stocks with one click of the button. So let's check that out now. Okay, so here we are at the multi-analyzer and what you're going to do is you're going to put in stock symbols here, the start date here, and the end date here. And we can use these tickers over here. This is the S&P 500. You also have the Dow 30, the Russell 2000, the NASDAQ. So all of these different stock symbols you can use there at your convenience and what we would do is just copy so I'm going to analyze the S&P 500 so I'll just copy these and then I'll go back to my multi-analyzer and I'm just going to paste them here then I'll put my start date so January 24th 2013 and end date, let's say one year later. And usually I do this daily. I analyze the S&P 500 to see which buys are available for me. And then I'll just hit the Analyze Multi-Data. 
and it'll say that it automatically saves your file so just make sure that you have it saved as the correct name and then you can see here it'll start processing and then over on this side it'll give you a time amount that it will take to analyze the stocks it does take a little while to analyze the stocks because it's doing thousands of calculations for each stock and it's also comparing it to all of the other stocks but it's doing the same basic thing that we did with the single analyzer it's telling us if it's a good company at a bargain price and it'll put all of our stocks that it analyzes into this saved data sheet okay as you can see it says three percent completed and at this point I would just go have lunch or read a book or do whatever I want to do while the analyzer does all the work for me and when I come back it'll be finished and have all 500 stocks analyzed and put in the order with the best buys at the top and then the riskiest at the bottom okay so the multi analyzer has finished and it has put all of our stocks into the save data spreadsheet and you can see that all of the recommended buys are in green and then all of the possible buys are in yellow and they're all in order from the best buys at the top and then as you go down um, at the bottom will be the riskiest stocks so this makes it really easy for you to find good stocks to buy and you can go through these and pick which stocks you want to buy or if you want help in choosing then just click on the my investment plan and it'll help you to choose stocks for you so I'd already done this but what you'll do is click this my investment plan and it'll ask you a few questions about the stocks and it'll help you to determine which ones you should buy so I would just go right through now and answer these questions okay so it has created my investment plan these are the recommended stocks for me to buy and I actually went through and I liked Apple now the reason why I liked Apple was because when I looked it up in the saved data sheet I saw that Apple was a good company at a bargain price and it said that I should possibly buy it and um, when I looked over at the company rating it was at 95 points out of 100 so excellent score and also when I went further over I saw that the 52 week low was very close to the current price um, I can look over here and see the percent difference and you can see that at 6.87 percent that's the difference between the current price and the um, 52 week low so I knew it was really close to the 52 week low so it was at a cheap price right now so what I did was I go back here and I can see how many shares I want to buy so how much money do I have to invest so at the time I had uh, 13,000 to invest and the market price here it says it was at $450.50 but when I checked online it was closer to $440 it had gone down um, my brokerage I use Scott Trade and they charge seven per trade so then I hit calculate okay so if I scroll down here I can see that if I buy one share of Apple at that price I would need to make 3.18 percent return just to cover my brokerage fee cost but if I bought the maximum 29 shares then I'd only have to make 0.11 percent to cover my brokerage cost so this kind of gives you an idea of whether it's worth it or not to buy it. Obviously, if you can only afford one share of Apple, then you're already down 3.18%, so it might not be worth it for you to buy. But I'm okay. I'm going to go with the maximum of 29 shares. So actually, I did go online. I'm just going to go to that now. Here's my Scott Trade account, and you can see here that Apple AAPL I bought it this was the price that I got it at it actually went down a little more I just set a limit order and I got it at 437.50 basically 
and here's my 24 shares and 5 shares, so 29 shares together. This is my date that I bought it on, January 25th, 2013. And then I went ahead right on the same date, and I put in another limit order to sell it at 459.37. Now I'm all about value investing and holding for the long term, but sometimes I'll do this and just set a limit order. Because in my view, if I happen to make 5% return in a day or a week, then that's just a bonus for me. So sometimes I'll just set that right away if I feel like the stock might jump up. Okay, I just wanted to update you on what has happened with the shares of Apple that I bought. As you remember, I bought the shares on January 25th, 2013. I bought 29 shares at $437 and around 50 cents. And this was the total cost of $12,694. Now today, this was on, uh, as I said, Friday, January 25th. Today, it is Tuesday. There you can see here, Tuesday, January 29th, 2013, 11.53 a.m. Eastern Time. And I had set a limit order for a 5% gain. So from 437 my buying price, I set the limit order for around 459. As you can see that the price is around 458 now. And it already actually hit the 459.55 for the day's range. So my order was executed. And let's just go to that. So this was what I bought it at. Uh, this is what it was executed at. This is one of my Scott Trade uh, Roth IRA accounts. Uh, Apple was sold 29 shares at 459.37, and this was the total amount. So let's just bust out our handy calculator, and I'm just showing you this to that you get an idea that this is real and the returns you can get are really good so we'll subtract this amount from the original amount I paid so down there $12,694 and you can see $620 return not bad for for three days uh, three trading days, that is. Um, and you can do this same kind of thing. I've done this, um, actually, this is the fourth stock I've done in the last three weeks the same way, making 5% return. And um, you don't have to do this the same way. You can also keep them for the long, the long run. And that's the point of it. You're finding good companies that you can keep for the long run. And they're at bargain prices, so you're assured of, you know, good return and less risk. And if you remember how I found this stock, it took me all of about five minutes to find it. I just let the analyzer do all the work. It sorted, compared all the stocks. It gave me a company rating of 95, which I liked for Apple. So I knew it was a good company. And then I just went over and I checked how far away it was from the 52 week low and it was 6.87 percent away from the 52 week low so I knew it was really close to the 52 week low and I knew it was at a bargain price then I even went over to the my investment plan it helped me choose that stock Apple I went into the share calculator to find out how many shares I should purchase and it said I could purchase up to 29 minutes so that's what I did as I said, it was all of about five or ten minutes that it took me at the most. And that's the good thing about the analyzer. You don't have to spend a lot of time. And you can have confidence in knowing that it will help you pick good companies at bargain prices. It will maximize your returns and minimize your risk. So why not give it a shot?